Welcome to the Accelerate Church TV program. We are so glad that you could tune in with us today. Pastor Jeremy is currently teaching the series, Go. He is breaking down the Great Commission. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. That is for you and me, my friend. And Pastor Jeremy is teaching us how to do that. Let's head into the sanctuary right now. When rebuke comes, you know you're under the flow of love. If there's never a rebuke, you haven't found a father yet. Now, I don't know why some people end up in unbelief and hardness of heart. Well, it's because they don't like rebuke. Rebuke keeps you clean. Know what I mean? <laughs> rebuke keeps you clean. It really does. So Jesus shows up after the resurrection full of love. And he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. There was also the fact that he told them his word and they didn't believe his word. You should know this. If Jesus gives you his word and you don't count on him to be a God of his word, it angers him. Just know that. It's never changed. God's always been that way from the Garden of Eden until you read into the millennial reign and beyond the new heavens and new earth. He expects you, when he speaks a word, to say, I receive it in Jesus' name. Let's practice that. Say, I... Receive, Receive the Word of God, word of God. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Don't be deceived. Just because you're a Christian and you sit right here and you think, well, I'm a Christian. I don't have to worry about a hard heart. Don't be ignorant of what Hebrews chapter 3 says. Hold your place in Mark 16. I promise we're going to get through that tonight. Uh, and Lord willing. <laughs> I, better stop. I better not make promises bigger than I can cash. You know what I mean? It's like filling out a check bigger than it will clear. So I better just hold up. Hopefully, Lord willing, we'll get through Mark 16. But look at Hebrews 3 real quick. I have it here on the screen, verse 12. For those of you that say, well, I'm a Christian. I don't have to worry about a hard heart. What do you do with this? Beware, brethren. Now, anytime you see brethren or beloved in the Scripture, who's it talking to? Me, a New Testament, blood-bought, Holy Ghost-filled Christian. Amen? Uh, is it talking to you? Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Well, I've always wondered because people love to tell me, well, it's controversial. Your solid stand against once saved, always saved. The true way to say it is unconditional eternal security. But I'm very, um, very bold to tell you there's no such thing. Not so you're scared, but what do I do with the verse like this? How do you depart from the living God if you were never with him? It would sure be strange for you to say that you departed from Dallas today when you were never in Dallas. It doesn't even make sense, does it? So for someone to say, well, you couldn't depart from God once you're with it. Well, then why does Hebrews 3.12 say, beware brethren to a Christian? So see, if you don't guard your heart, unbelief is coming for you. And unbelief is inspired by a demon that never sleeps. I say that because you have to sleep and take time out to, to rest up, right? And you can get weary and tired. And the devil always picks on people that are worn out, tired, stragglers. They don't like to come to church. Are you listening to me? They got something more interesting and more demanding on their schedule. Those with the least amount of revelation knowledge, therefore, because they're not in under the flow of hearing the word, the devil always picks on them. And what is he going to use? He's going to use unbelief. He's going to use a departing, an exit ramp that looks more appealing. Look, this highway's boring. All it is is another white line passing, another white line, another white line. Oh, man, mundane. Oh, oh I just got to pray again. Got to worship again. Oh, Wednesday, got to go to church again. Oh, Sunday's coming. I go to church again. And it's just on this highway. But you look up and you say, wow, that looks nice. I think I'll take an exit. That's what happens. Departing. From the living God. He says, but exhort one another. Verse 13, Hebrews 3. Exhort one another. That means encourage one another. While it's called today. Don't wait till tomorrow. Hey, if God lays someone on your heart, even if it's late at night, call them up. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, on that part. What you need to do is you need to pray for them. I thought I would see if you're really listening tonight. Now, if God lays them on your heart strong enough, and you know them well enough, it is what it is, but... If God lays someone on your heart while it's today, go ahead. Go ahead and exhort them. Go ahead and pray for them. Amen? Amen. Take authority over those spirits that are blind in their eyes. Whoosh. Now look what he says. Exhort one another daily. I'm glad that you were exhorted 
Sunday. I'm glad we were exhorted a week ago when we had Pastor Nancy Dufresne. I'm glad about all that, but guess what? It's today. Yeah. And today you need to be exhorted, lest any of you be hardened. Look, look at that process. A hardening process through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin feels good in the moment. Sin doesn't seem to always bring its payment immediately. So it's very deceitful. And some people say, preacher, you stand against sin. If sin was that bad, God would have already taken me out. Well, it's his long-suffering mercy that you haven't been taken out. And some people that are in sin need to be told today, turn around and run for your life. Today, do it today, do it today. Every moment that you continue on a path of sin without turning around, there's a hardening effect happening to your heart. And if you're not careful, you can get so hard that the same people that God has called you to be around, the same pastor God's called you to, can end up in your mind becoming your enemy through a hardness that you got in your heart. A hard heart interprets everything that's said as hard. When truth comes forth, they say, that's hard. It comes against the sin you're involved with, that's mean. That's your conviction. You know how many times I've heard that about alcohol? You will know, it sounds like a lot of people really know how to make a church blow up because they love to tell me, Pastor, if you would just not preach on alcohol, most of my friends would come, a lot of my family would come. Well, here's the thing. I want them to come and hear the truth. I don't want to run them off. But there's enough places you can go to where the pastor will drink with you. This just isn't the place. This is a decontamination station where you can come in and get free. See, how am I going to lead you into freedom if I'm bound by the same demon? You just need to know this. If this is your first time or hundredth time here, I made a decision in 2006 when I said, Lord, I surrender. I'm going to follow your plan in my life. I made a decision I'm not willing to go back on, which is this. No matter who I'm separated from, no matter who I make angry, no matter who loves me, I'm going to preach the truth of God's word. And I am going to resist sin. And if the Lord brings up sin in my life that I need to handle, guess what I'm going to do? Turn from it immediately today. Everybody say today. today. See, tomorrow's too late to turn from sin. Tomorrow's never promised to the sinner man. And I'm not just talking about sinners out in this world. I'm talking about if you're a Christian and you know what to do and you don't do it, it's to you sin. If you continue in that and you refuse to turn from it today, you're in danger. You're in danger. And if you don't lose your life, you're definitely going to have a hardened heart. And that's what this says. For we have become, verse 14, Hebrews 3, partakers of Christ. That's the anointed one in his anointing. If, there's that two-letter word again. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. There's something in these verses that just jumped off the page, and I believe the Holy Spirit wanted me to share it with you. Sin reduces a person's confidence. Accelerate Church places a high priority on instilling God's Word into the heart of the next generation. Our kids' ministry is spreading hope by teaching the Word of God on a level that young ones will understand and take home with them. In Accelerate Kids, your kid will experience awesome praise and worship illustrated sermons from God's Word and interactive games in both big and small groups. Serving God is fun and we would love for your kids to join us at Accelerate. When God puts a call in your life, you're never going to step out and go if you're holding to sin at the same time. Trust me, I know from the voice of experience. But when you finally decide, I'm leaving that behind, Lord, I'm turning my back on that and I'm going to follow you with all my heart, you better get ready because then you're going to be confident. And then everyone you hung out with is going to be like, what's your problem? Who do you think you are? Well, I'm sorry. I'm confident in who God called me. It just is. I mean, it is pretty much like self-explanatory if you know me. God called me to this. I don't have to sit here and talk you into it. And you know what? You don't have to talk people into what God called you to do either. Once you find it, you just got to stay in your lane, right? Mark 16. We're going to get through it. Here we go. Later, he appeared to the eleven. For the 11th time we're reading this, it feels like. 
They sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart. See, you can't roll with Jesus without going ahead and manning up a little bit because they did not believe. See, that's why Jesus doesn't like it when they don't, people don't believe, even if it's the disciples. That's us. Those who had seen him. They didn't believe those who had seen him. And he said, I want you to catch all this. I said all that. We spent at least two sessions talking about rebuke for this reason. On the other side of rebuke and them handling that rebuke and receiving it and correcting it. Now he said, go. The go didn't show up till the rebuke came. Everybody's raring to go, raring to go. They've never even caught one rebuke. And if you can't take the rebuke of the one that hung on the cross, died for you, rose again, you're sure not going to take the persecution of men out here that want to kill you. Don't even know they're inspired by demons. And if you're going to go and you're going to carry this authority, you're going to have to understand, I'm submitted to the king, and either he's really with you or he's not. And there's coming a time in the church of the United States of America that you're going to have to have the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords with you, and it can't just be hype. It can't just be talk. There's some situations, maybe some of you are in this very night. The only way you're coming through them is for the King to show up. And you know this, that if you go, he said in Matthew, I'll be with you to the end of the age. Woo! That's it. you got to go, though. Everybody say go. Where did I go? Into all the world. And get preachy, would you? You know what people, the humanist, preaching never changed anybody. It changes everybody that's in the kingdom. What are you talking about? Only a devil would say preaching didn't change anybody. Preaching has its effect on you more than you realize. I'm supposed to preach the gospel to every creature. You kidding me? If a raccoon will stare at me long enough, I'll preach to him. That's how you got to get, right? Here we see it again. We must go. Everybody say go. Go. If not us, then who? If not now, then when? What are we waiting for? Well, uh, I'm not not really uh, uh, confident yet. Get in there. Hang in there. See, because so many Christians have been attacked by humanistic thought. They've been deceived by demonic forces. They don't ever go. Imagine if everyone, I want you to imagine this with me. Just Maybe you have to close your eyes to imagine it. Every person that names the name of Christ literally went and preached everywhere they went the gospel of Jesus Christ. This planet would be different. It would be different. It really would be. Well, Where are we supposed to go? To everyone, everywhere. Well, people say, well, this is foolishness. Well, of course it's foolishness to the natural mind. But the things of God cannot be perceived in the natural, right? They're spiritual. Now, you say, "Uh, i got to believe. See, he rebuked the disciples because of unbelief. And you've got to believe if you're going to go, right? And you've got to believe in spite of rebuke. When it doesn't feel good, you still go. You got that? And then he lists things that show us fruit of believing. Here's what he said in Mark 16, 16. He who believes and is baptized. So you got to be baptized. you got to be baptized. Many of you have been baptized right here. Praise God. you got to be baptized. How many have been baptized? Just wave at me for a second. Praise God. That's good. There's step one. He who does not believe. Oh, I skipped a lot. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe. Will be condemned. That word means damned. Well, that got, that got serious quick. If you're believed, you're baptized, you're going to be saved. If you don't believe, you're going to be condemned. Notice you won't be baptized either. So I won't have you raise your hand if you've never been baptized. Here's what I'll say. Sign up for next baptisms. What are you waiting for, right? Verse 17. These signs will follow. So notice this. We don't ever follow signs. Signs follow us. Believers don't follow signs. If you train yourself to follow signs, you're going to be deceived in the end time hour. Because I read in my New Testament where the enemy, the Antichrist specifically, is going to come with deceiving signs and wonders. It actually says lying signs and wonders. That's a deceiving wonder and sign. So if you're always, ooh, I want to see a sign. I want to see a wonder. Hey, I love it when God moves. I love it when we see that. By the way, it's happening right here in this very place. 
Sunday, I, I said, clarity. And the Lord told me a specific couple. I was right here worshiping. The Lord said, you need to pray for them for clarity. I didn't know what that's about. I don't have a clue. Still all the details of dad. I might know a little here or there, but I mean, I don't know generally what that's talking about. But then as I thought, okay, well, Lord, I'll be obedient. Then I stood up here and Aaron didn't know this is not pre-rehearsed. I'm being led by the Holy Ghost. Grab her hand and said, stay here with me. Because I had a check on the inside of me. There's more than just them that need this. So I thought, we'll lay hands on, you know, eight, ten people, something like that. And I said, how many need clarity? And three quarters of the church raised their hand. Most of you that were here raised your hand that you needed clarity. And I've already heard back some testimonies. Yeah, stuff that started clearing up the very next day. And let me just tell you this. If it hadn't cleared up yet, then you just got to get more focused. If you're looking through a scope and it's not clear, you just keep clicking until it gets clear. Woo! You just keep praying. You just keep confessing. You just keep shouting. You keep raising up holy hands, huh? You keep praying in the Holy Ghost. Click, 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 till all of a sudden it gets clear. Oh, there we go. There's clarity. Clarity's coming in Jesus' name. These signs will follow those that believe. The signs follow. You believe and you go and signs start following. You following this process? In my name, they'll cast out demons. So here's the thing, right up front. If all hell seems to be breaking loose, there's something uncommon. You you might say, quote, it's supernatural in nature almost. It's demonic in nature that keeps happening. You need to speak to it and take authority over it. You've got authority. This is part of going. And you tell that demon of deception, get out! Sickness, go! Headache, leave! Hip pain, get out! Little toe pain, get out! Heel pain, go! Somebody said, that's weird. What's weird is sitting around putting up with it all day. When this sign should follow you. On the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month, we have Life Links. We gather together with like-minded believers and discuss the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching. We have food, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships with our brothers and sisters within the church. We would love for you to join us for Life Links. You can find a list of all of our groups along with their locations on our app, our website, or just stop by the desk in the lobby. We have someone there ready to help you find the perfect LifeLink group. The call to follow Christ will never end in your life. Not just in this lifetime, but into eternity. You're going to have to follow Christ Jesus. It never ends. I want you to think about it. I know I could say those words, and you might get tired of me saying it over and over, but the call on your life to follow Him never ends. Not even once you get to heaven, not once there's a new heaven and new earth. Hey, throughout eternity, we're going to have to do what He said to do. So see, if you have a problem down inside of you of doing what God says to do, lift up holy hands to him. Shout unto the Lord. Bring the tithe. Forsake not the assembling of yourself together. See what I'm talking about? Like where the rubber meets the road. In the stuff we don't like to do. Forgive those who trespass against you. Drop the charges is what that means. It doesn't mean you forget it ever happened. It means you drop the charges. You're not going to keep holding that grudge. You're not going to keep mad mugging them. You're not going to give them that dirty look, right? How are you going to walk in victory? How are you going to be part of the feet of Jesus that's just chilling, putting his feet up over the enemy? When you're all entangled with the work of the enemy of unforgiveness. Some people say, well, I don't know if I like that. See, that's the point. You've got to have to deal with yourself honestly. How do you feel about following? Because when he said go, and you're like, I don't feel like it. I don't want to do it that way, Lord. I think I found a more relevant way to do it than what the Bible says. You didn't. You found deception. Oh, but I've been trained. I've got a degree in deception. <laughs> Some people's degrees, that's what it is, Literally. They have it hanging on the wall, but all that education wasn't based on the knowledge of Christ. It was based on disregarding this. 
<laughs> and then they put a degree up. Wow, it's amazing. I'm not making fun of you. You need a degree. I got a f- couple hanging up in my, my office. I'm proud of them. I like them. So see, I'm not against them. I'm just, just simply saying, what's it based on? What's it based on? Now, I will never forget the pastor that impacted my life forever, sitting at the radio station at Kingdom Keys Network, where I worked 17 years full-time, which is now about to sign off right now. Thanks for listening. Go to acceleratechurch.cc if you want the rest of this sermon. Now. Do it now. Love y'all. Have a good night. As we go off the air, right? Boom. Five seconds ago, I was too late. Cut me off. I was watching it close. But I'm there, and this preacher says, Jeremy? I'm about 17 years old. He says, do you know what we're all going to do when we get to heaven? How many of y'all have heard this story before? Yeah. Well, if you hadn't, you're going to hear it tonight, that's for sure. Some of you are going to hear it for the 50th time. Like, y'all pray for my wife. She has to hear my stories over and over. She's like, I just wait for the day you tell a new story. <laughs> I wish I had some, but I can't just make stuff up. But this, this pastor said, what are we going to do when we get to heaven? I said, we're going to shout forevermore. And he said, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, okay, maybe so. What are we going to do when we get to heaven, Jeremy? I said, well, psh, dance on the streets of gold. You know, I mean, I'm trying to come up with some cool sounding stuff. He said, how about this? You're going to do what he tells you. <laughs> well, that don't sound like too much fun if you don't like doing what he told you now. I don't know. I mean, some people say, oh, that's it? That doesn't feel spiritual. The most spiritual thing you'll ever do in your life is the Word. That's it. When it says, if you don't forgive people, you're like the man who was pulled in front of the king, basically, the master. And he owed, oh, I don't know, different paraphrases of the Scripture, put different amounts on it with inflation. Now, it would be safe to say he owed 5 to $10 million dollars. Maybe more than that. He said, have mercy on me. I'll pay it back. Have mercy. Don't throw me. Don't throw me to the dungeon. And the master said, you know what? I forgive you. I forgive you. Wow, what a deal. But that guy left after being forgiven. No longer did he get, he didn't even get home. And he's walking. He sees a guy that owes him the equivalent of about five bucks, ten bucks. He says, pay me what you owe me. And the guy does what he did to that master earlier. He says, have mercy on me. I'll pay it when I get it. He said, that's it. Throw him into jail. Throw him into jail. Now, when the first master heard that, how many think he was all giggly about it? Hey, oh, I love you. What a guy. That's the man right there. Come and be by my side. Spend eternity with me. That's not what happened, was it? What happened? Jesus is the one that told the story, by the way. Here's what happened. He said, go get him. Throw him into the dungeon where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Why? Because he, he wouldn't forgive somebody for 10 bucks after he'd been forgiven for millions. After how you were a fool in the past and the Lord forgave you. See, I don't ever forget. This is why I received communion before I ever will preach. And received communion at least twice a week, obviously. Many times I'll do it more than that. But the reason I do that is i got to keep the reality of I'm nothing without Christ. Everything I have is in Him. Because, boy, I made a mess of my life trying to do it my own way. And the only reason I stand before you is because He is merciful, because He is full of grace, and because He loves us, He hadn't given up on us. Aren't you thankful for that? Yeah. So when we get into eternity, what are we going to do? What He tells us. Might as well practice now. Yeah, but I get tired of going to church. I get tired of forgiving when people do me wrong. It doesn't feel good. Of course it doesn't feel good. Whoever told you that this thing was based on your feelings? How many times have you heard me talk about feelings? Quite a few times, right? Feelings are good. I love feeling good. I love it when my wife makes me feel good. I like it when my children write me a note make me feel good. I love it when y'all write me a card. Oh, I feel good. I love sitting right here and hearing y'all sing. Oh, that makes me feel so good. I get the feels. I love it. Woo, what a shout. What a praise God. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. But what happens when we don't feel it? See, we can't base anything in Christianity on feelings. If you're crossing the street, you better base 
your estimation of whether it's safe to cross the street on your feelings. If you're walking with God, don't you take that next step basing it on your feelings. Is that clear enough? Wow. we got to do what he tells us. Now, this demand is too much for many people. What? To follow. That's why this scripture, and this is what I'm calling about, saying about circling back, John 21, verse 20, when Peter turned around and saw the disciple that Jesus loved. Remember we looked at this the other day? You all remember this, right? He, Peter turned around and he saw the disciple that Jesus loved. That's John writing that about himself. It always it makes me smile at least. Who also leaned on his breast at the supper. He said, Lord, is he the one that betrays you? Remember, it's like, talking about throwing somebody on the bus. That's like the bus went, do, 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 reverse, forward again and reversed again. Like, thanks a lot, right? Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, but Lord, what about this man? John, he looks like the one going to betray you right here. And Jesus said to him, if I will, that he remains till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. The command is to follow Jesus no matter the cost. In fact, many people take from this that Jesus was telling Peter ahead of time, you're going to die following me. Wow. Don't look at others. The matter at hand is that you follow. Hope you're listening tonight. This right here could bring clarity. Doesn't matter what others say, even if they're friends, even if they're family, even if they're people you love and respect. What you have to look at is this. Has Jesus called you to follow him or not? And if he's called you to follow him, see, that's why I know this is affecting us going. This will affect us going, making disciples, casting out demons, all those signs we talked about. I like Matthew 16, verse 24. Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me. Now, if who? Anyone. That's you and me even. If you desire to come after him, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and what? Follow me. So, so get this. Everyone and anyone who wants to go after Jesus must get following down. Once again, thank you for tuning in to today's program. If you would like to hear the rest of this series, you can head over to acceleratechurch.cc and click on the media tab. There you will see sermons that Pastor Jeremy has preached since 2013. And this series is also there ready for you to download. If you are in the area, we would love to meet you in person. We're located at 4400 South Crockett here in Amarillo. Our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. We'd love to meet you in person. And if we don't see you in person, we'll catch you on the next Accelerate Church TV broadcast.